Hello, this is Peter Bell. Hi, Peter. This is Jim Haskett. Hi, Jim. Thanks very much for calling in. Well, thank you. So, you're in. Uh, you're at the uh, roundup. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, got a media pass running around taking a bunch of photos for social media and trying to provide some coverage out there in a in a slightly different way um you know there's lots of real accredited media media organizations but being there as an independent pretty fun too yeah no great um yeah i didn't make it to round up uh just got a little bit going on here to be honest <laughs> well you certainly do good lord i'm impressed <laughs> Yeah, we're uh, kind of enjoying this drilling. It's it's like an Easter egg hunt. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I see the well, photos. There's, I don't know, the Twitter account that you guys have there. There's a picture um, showing the drill just off the side of the road. And the you know, picture's worth a thousand words. That's uh, wonderful to see. Yeah, this is not a not a remote location. We have uh, paved road access right to the site. Uh, you know, we're actually right off the uh, um, road that runs right up the Round Mountain. Uh, you keep oh, going wow. up uh, the road about 30 miles, and you get to the Round Mountain mine. So, you know, we've got uh, uh, supply trucks running past us. There's a cat and a Komatsu depot in Round Mountain. Uh, you know, so it, it's a fantastic place to try and uh, build a mine. There's, you know, a uh, very supportive community. Uh, we've got power and water within a couple miles of site. Um, you know, it's got everything you need. And in as much as there's a highway right there running by, as you've just described, the other thing that really struck me here is, um, you know, this is – there's no exposure in this area too. You're uh, driving over these roads. I always wonder like what's down below us and to see somebody drilling it, uh, that's that it, it sparks a whole bunch of interest for me. Yeah. The, uh, the deposit was actually located uh, by Kennecott who was drilling on it uh, back in the early nineties. And uh, they were drilling up in the Hills on the open outcrops where there's, uh, you know, a lot of solidification, uh, tons of alteration, and then they uh, they ran a whole suite of geophysics up there and through the valley. Um, and uh, actually, on the basis of that, they moved their program to the valley floor and started drilling. And on their uh, 12th hole, they, you know, they hit uh, uh, like 13 meters at eight and a half grams. Um, <laughs> and that was the, the, what they call um, what we're calling the discovery zone. Uh, yeah. So you know it was actually discovered by Kennecott and their work, and turned out that there was one uh, one single outcrop in the middle of the valley floor uh, in a drainage, and that's about it. Otherwise, it's uh, all under gravels, and uh, you know the drill targets were largely outlined through geophysics. Uh, both Newmont and Kennecott did work on geophysics, and and we've had a lot of drilling. Um, but for the last 11 years, it was owned by uh, uh, actually 13 years. It was owned by uh, Midway Gold, and they were focused on some very high-grade uh, structural zones. Uh, we do have a uh, zone of uh, high angle splays and breaches that uh, are uh, highly mineralized. Um, but there's also a contact related mineralization, which is lower grade, but uh, fills in the gaps between the splays. And that's what we're targeting. I wonder how they ever went about finding uh, that structural stuff with the cover. Mainly by uh, drill bit. Um, wow. there, there is geophysics. Um, when Newmont was on this, they completed a full spectrum of uh, uh, magnetics and uh, gravity, uh, EM, IP, uh, SAS map, 
um, resistivity, um, both ground and airborne. Uh, so we've got a full suite of uh, geophysics, which um, picked up structures and uh, picked up uh, uh, various uh, uh, gravity highs, uh, high zone and uh, what we call our OPA, our uh, argillite, which is the basement rock. Yep. Um, yep. So, you know, that's how they found a lot of it. Um, but we do have all of that data and the geophysical data that uh, Newmont uh, left us uh, is over about a 20 mile trend. So we do have geophysics over <laughs> A large swath of ground along the trend, uh, um, and it's you know a big chunk of the Walker Lane trend. We do not own all of that land, but we do own all the data. <laughs> yeah, good. Well, and 15 years ago, poking around undercover there might not have been the best use of time and money, um, but I guess that's changing in Nevada. Yeah, it is, and. Uh, um, you know, we've got uh, over 90,000 meters of drilling wow. along that trend, uh, with about uh, half of that being in the uh, main deposit zone itself. Uh, so we do but, have substantial additional exploration potential outside of what we see. And it's a, it's a wonderful presentation deck here you have too, right? Um, the long section you have showing... Uh, the drilling and and the block model there and and the stratigraphy as well with the discovery zone you mentioned um really a known entity to to some degree here yes it is uh the big change um you know what makes it different for us looking at this and uh um previous operators is that when we acquired the property uh, there had been a very onerous uh, sliding scale royalty on it. Uh -huh. And at $700 gold, that royalty went to 7%. <laughs> um, yeah. And so there was a focus on only the high grade material. And, uh, you know, the lower grade uh, blanket zoner, kind of almost a mantle, uh, yeah. was ignored. Uh, we were able to reduce that royalty down to a flat 2% NSR with a 1% buyout option for $1 right. million. Yep. Uh, so as a result, we're looking at this with a different set of economic eyes uh, than had been previously uh, used to review the project. And that allowed us to drop cutoff grade. And as we drop that cutoff grade, um, you know, the continuity significantly improved between the uh, zones. Well, and then and, the uh, drilling and the drilling today is an even further step down that path. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now we're proving our point, filling in the gaps Wonderful. and uh, demonstrating that that uh, blanket um, is a lot more consistent than people believed. And uh, um, but at the same time, we also have these very high grade zones in between. So it's, it's got a very nice combination of uh, high grade cores with uh, lower grade halos around them. Mm -hmm. And that's spread over almost a two and a half kilometer trend uh, that's maybe 500 uh, meters wide. Um, you know, and it's it's a long, it's a large extensional break in a regional fault system that uh, created all of these splays. So it's a nice corridor of mineralization. And so much to say about all that. Um, again, speaking about the cover. Um, and thinking about all the faulting and stuff that's going on at depth down there. Um, again, appreciate some of the geological diagrams, the great shells. And again, I, the basement rock that seems to kind of swell up closer to surface there. I wonder, um, I, I guess that's structurally related. Yeah, it is. Uh, there are a number of regional faults around there and 
there's also paleo topography on there. Uh, that um, basement rock is Ordovician in age, and uh, the, the cover on it is tertiary volcanic. So it's an old rock covered with very young volcanics. <laughs> um, and uh, what you've got there is a weathering surface. And so the top of the argillite was prepared uh, down down about uh, 30 or 40 meters deep by weathering. And then uh, you have the contact zone there with the uh, overlying volcanics. Uh, that creates a nice uh, unconformity that, uh, you know, the mineralizing solution uh, followed along. And yes. uh, then also mineralized favorable beds and horizons within the volcanics. Yep. So you've got, um, kind of this dual population scenario, which uh, not uncommon in Nevada. Um, a lot of the deposits have it, but uh, very prevalent in this particular project. Yes. And I wonder, yeah. is there any sense of going deep into the Ordovician there to try and chase some of those feeder structures or whatever's uh, bringing the fluids up? Uh, if there's, Or again, with the geophysics, if there's any indication of some something bigger down there of interest yeah i mean uh, there's definitely that potential um it's hard to discern uh which are uh you know exactly what the feeder zones is uh midway spent a lot of time uh trying to drill the feeders uh you know and it's the, the issue there is that that very high grade is only about 20% of your ounces. Yeah. Um, you know, and you have 80% in the lower grade halo. Um, you know, our first job is going to be to flush out the 80% and then we can concentrate on the smaller population. And with the lower grade halo, um, any thoughts just in general on the cover? And 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 pitting this, and whether or not the cover becomes problematic for the economics, it's not. The cover doesn't look too deep, really, in a lot of these areas in the long term. No, um, where the uh, um, ore division comes close to surface, uh, we've got gravels that are only uh, ten meters deep. Yeah, wonderful. Um, yeah. Probably the deepest gravel we've hit is uh, only about thirty-five meters. Um, Wow. So you have, uh, you know, there's some post post mineral uh, volcanics on top of the uh, uh, tertiary volcanics that uh, are mineralized, but uh, for the most part, uh, this system is within uh, 150 to 200 meters of surface. So it's, and, it's overall, it's a fairly shallow target. And maybe another question too, coming back to what you said about the. Um... The initial exposure in the wash there, um, I can see in one of the maps showing the land status and, and all of your claim block there, quite a bunch of sections that you have um, and the outline of the pit right along the highway there and you kind of make out the, the wash that would have cut through part of that. Um, I wonder, uh, you know, it's you have a pretty big claim block block around that. Is it pretty much focused on on the pit area here in the infill, or or is there a sense of, you know, even going further down that wash? No, we have uh, we have a number of additional targets um, that are available to us uh, through some of the historic work. Um, you know, that requires more follow up. So that you know, our strategy at this point will be to flush out. Uh, and properly outline uh, the core of what we've got here, because uh, quite frankly, uh, uh, by training, I'm a mining engineer. Um, you know, we've got an, almost enough already to be able to design a project. Um, you know, I'd like to increase that up towards that million ounce range uh, because it makes a more robust project, but. Uh, uh, you know, we can do that, but I feel fully confident that we've got the data to be able to outline several more targets on this project. Yeah. 
Yep, certainly. Um, you know, so it's 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 concentrate on the pay zone first, and then we can step out on that. Yes, yes, and and, yeah. uh, and the share count that you've managed to keep so tight too. Uh, we talk about that maybe at some point, but that's um, clear that you have a focus in mind there. <laughs> yeah, I mean we've got twenty point eight million shares outstanding. Uh, there's f just over five million warrants, so it's all um, you know very tight. We've got <clears throat> we're leaving ourselves runway here. <laughs> to be able to do something very positive. Um, Certainly, yes. You know, and uh, we can make it meaningful to our shareholders. Uh, you know, anytime we get results, it, it it does become meaningful. And maybe to step back again and talk about those, uh, that million ounce target and the measure and indicated category that you have there um, and the grades, the the tonnage, all this. I wonder if, if uh, what what kind of response did you get following that twenty eighteen March twenty eighteen resource estimate? Well, the response was was good. Um, you know, it was initial response on historic data uh, looked at in a different light, and we produced a. Uh, um, a measured and indicated resource of uh, 186,000 ounces at 0.95 grams per ton, at, with an inferred of 238,000 ounces at 0.77 grams per ton. Uh, I can tell you that within that uh, is some very high grade, um, but that was an initial uh, approach and. Keep in mind that uh, when the majors looked at this project, they were looking for the five to 10 million ounce sort of target. Yes. Uh, they did not immediately see that. So, you know, they move on. Um, and uh, Newmont actually dropped the project uh, in the middle of uh, what was a, a pretty serious downturn in gold price. So their expiration budgets were getting cut. Um, Midway's focus was on the high-grade structures, yeah. uh, so they did a lot of work over the last 13 years on those structures. But what it, what we wound up with was a project that was not systematically drilled. It was more or less uh, um, a number of high-grade zones were cherry-picked yeah. uh, without um, proper infill drilling between the zones and that's where we're targeting wonderful yeah well and i see it even and yeah. in the plan view of the 2018 block model um, with the pit shells there in the presentation deck that one little uh, body of ore off to the southeast in its own little pit um you know that's a yellowed colored zone there's some grade in there and i guess that's is that one of the, i believe that's one of the areas that um drill results uh, today, there was a couple holes, maybe three, um, in that gap area where there is no um, pit <coughs> plan. Yeah, and that's true. Uh, <coughs> sorry, um, we're targeting those type of gaps. Good. And, you know, as those infill, it will rapidly add ounces, um, it, or should. And uh, you know that that's our goal here is to fill in these large gaps where there's actually quite little drilling. And it looks like that's one of the more shallow areas off to the southeast there too. Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, the uh, ordivision comes uh, very close to surface there. Wonderful. Yeah, that's great. Um, so we've got, we've got a very solid target here. It's got some meat on its bones. Um, you know, this is not a pie in the sky project. It, it's a matter of uh, <laughs> doing good, solid, systematic work. Yes. And rethinking the historic data is a great way to start too. Um, I, I wonder, yeah. dollars spent, um, was there any up drilling that you did to upgrade or, or twin any old holes to get any information? Um, or was there, you know, chain of custody and all that that you were able to, to use the old data? 
Well, we, we are confirming the old data. Um, mainly, uh, we're not drilling twinning holes per se. We're drilling in between known holes in yes. places. And, uh, you know, the results are confirming the model quite nicely. Um, you know, so we do have enough information historically where we can confirm. But you also have a chain of uh, NI43-101 studies on this project going back, uh, you know, 15 years. Um, so there's been a lot of work done on, um, you know, quality of the drilling on uh, uh, free gold uh, issues pertaining to uh, assaying uh, free gold properly. Uh, there's, uh, um, you know, Newmont did an incredible job of uh, um, bringing all of the historic drilling into the database um, and doing QA, QC on that work. Uh, and then that has been built on by uh, um, Midway and now us. Uh, so, you know, we are able to rely on that historic work. It's, you know, it was done by uh, solid operators. And in the modern um, regulatory environment too, which is important. Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. Um, so, you know, those are, those are key points here that uh, we do have a great chain of custody all the way through. Yeah. And um, the metallurgy, when did that, when did people start working on that? Well, Kennecott, um, back in the, uh, um, you know, early 90s when they were working on this project, did about 300 uh, shake flask, flask tests and, uh, you know, determine leachability from that. Uh, there was additional work uh, done by uh, uh, Newmont and by Midway. Uh, so we do have test work completed uh, on gravity recovery, on uh, flotation, and as well as on uh, 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 leachability. Yep. And then we've done some limited test work ourselves, and uh, we've just loaded up another 20 bottle roll. So we should have the, that information up uh, Great. here in the next month or so. Wonderful. Always love to hear about the gravity recovery and the, and the and the free gold there. That's always fun. Yeah. What what's likely to occur here is that we do have some very high grade core zones, uh, and it's probably about twenty percent of the ounces, and we'll focus on quite likely putting that into a uh, gravity recovery circuit and then taking the tails from that, agglomerating those, and putting those on the heap leach. Yeah. Uh, and that, that is not an uncommon circuit in some of these Nevada deposits. Certainly, yes. Yeah. Um, so we, we, you know, that's all a matter of uh, future economic uh, trade-off study. Oh, and looking to Round Mountain for some inspiration there or guidance of what might come in the future. Many questions there, you know, the regional geological aspects of it. There's interesting ideas there. And and I wonder about the, you know, the metallurgy at, at Round Mountain um, as a comparable to, yeah. and, and even the high grade, low grade distinction as well. Yeah, it's not dissimilar. Um, they do have mellow as well as sea bleach ore at uh, Round Mountain. Great. Um, and they, they had it in the Manhattan district quite close to us as well. Yeah. And so, to you ask... Know, the, the similarities, uh, uh, the early explorers coming on to this project, which was uh, CORE, uh, Rio Agum, and then Canicut came on due to the... Uh, geologic similarity uh, to the Round Mountain uh, District. Um, so that was their, their targeting uh, in looking at this. And, uh, you know, you do have the buried calderas. You've got the uh, uh, tertiary volcanics over the uh, um, Ordovician rock, et cetera. Yeah. And, and the Round Mountain itself sticks up 
through some of that cover. Um, but it, it seems to be on the edge of um, some more exposed mountain range. And, and again, not dissimilar from what you have at the Tonopah project here. Yeah. Um, so that's, uh, um, that was the original model here. And that's the model that we're still tracking. Um, you know, there's similarities and then there's dissimilarities. No, no two ore bodies are ever the same, but uh, yep. uh, it seems to be, be fairly, uh, you know, uh, a usable model and it's proving up for us. And talking about the, um, this, this round mountain goldfield segment on one of the slides here and just putting all these known deposits on the map together, um, quite a distinct north-south trend to them um, and seeming to hug right along with one of the mountain ranges there too. I wonder, is there any sense of the you know regional geology there, epithermal deposits repeating in some way? Um, well, yeah, it's, I mean, there's other deposits that aren't on this map, um, that are close by, uh, so there, and, uh, I know the east side deposits to the east of us a ways, you know, that's the Legion's project. Uh, so there are kind of parallel trends through here. Yeah. Well, and I wonder about age dating and stuff, you, you know, at the ones that are shown there, if there's any sense that there was something happening here all around the same time. Yeah, I mean, this is part of the uh, Basin and Range province of the Great Basin. And uh, uh, so you do have, uh, you know, these intrusives that come through. Uh, Right on the other side of the mountain from our project is the uh, what used to be called the Tonopah Molly, which was a uh, Molly deposit that was mined by uh, um, Anaconda and then Cyprus. Uh, wow. And today it's owned by General Molly, uh, but that's you've got these uh, porphyry intrusives coming through um, right on the range front there. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's a very prolific uh, district, the whole thing. Lots of juice circulating around down there. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And that, you know, that's a key point. Uh, there is a lot of juice. There's a lot of alteration. It's almost everywhere you look. Um, so it's a matter of unraveling that puzzle as to where the uh, actual gold lays. <laughs> Certainly. Always. And having something known to start with is always a good place, right? Uh, again, this historical work and everything. And is there anything more you'd say about the, the news today? Uh, just that we're, uh, we put in another four drill holes uh, um, week before last into the lab. So we're waiting on another four sets of assays to come in and the, uh, drill crew is continuing to work on its drilling. Uh, so we will have uh, additional releases coming out fairly quickly here um, within the next month. Uh, you know, so we're building a, a good stream of information and, uh, you know, the targeting of uh, our drilling is to fill in some of these large gaps that are out there. Yeah, well, and it's 100 meter, 200 meter RC holes. Um, you can you can plug a lot of holes. Yeah, you can, and uh, uh, we do a takes about three days to uh, do a hole here. Um, yeah, so they they come through fairly quickly once we start drilling. Uh, we do have to push casing through the gravel uh, to con contain the uh, drilling solutions, but. Uh, yep. You know, once that's done, uh, the drilling goes quite quickly. Any sense of budget? Well, we raised uh, uh, 1.1 million uh, Canadian in uh, 
uh, late November, and yes. that was targeted for this program. Wonderful, great, and um, I saw a mention also of the downhole lengths are believed to be representative of true thickness for the low angle zones. I wonder yeah, about that. Um, yeah, that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, create true thickness in the blanket zones. Uh, so depending on how that uh, discontinuity between the argillite and the overlaying volcanics lays, uh, we're trying to intercept that, uh, you know, more or less perpendicular to create a true thickness. Yeah, well, um, and you're, you and you're know, drilling some pretty steep holes there. Yeah, in some places it's quite steep, uh, in other places a little less so. Um, but for the most part, uh, a lot of the historic drilling on this pro property was vertical. Um, yeah. So you do have vertical drilling in the blanket zones. You've got angle drilling in the structural zones. And, uh, you know, we're, we're angle drilling. Um, the blanket zone right now to try and create uh, as best as possible a true thickness while also looking at uh, um, you know we're passing through some of those structural zones clearly yeah well and I see up to hole 19 it's that's wonderful um, is that count go back to the start of um, your tenure of the project yeah that's uh, a we completed a total of uh, um, 20 holes in 2018. Great. Uh, so, um, you know, we're at, and then we're up to hole, uh, we've already completed, uh, we're on hole six of uh, 2019 now. <laughs> Wonderful. Great. Keep keep yeah, going. So, yeah, it's, we're just adding to it. Um, you know, like I said, uh, systematic work um, and targeted for filling in uh, where it'll do the most good. And maybe one question to come back to about the stock, um, that share count. Was there a rollback or is this a fairly new public entity? No, this was a... Uh, uh, CPC that we took on to the Toronto Venture in November of 2017. Wonderful. Capital Pool Company. Yeah. Uh, the Capital Pool Company, uh, when we picked up the shell, it had about uh, 8 million shares in it. Uh, we gave a million and a half shares to the uh, royalty holders to get rid of that royalty. And then uh, um, We've now done two financings, one in November 2017, one in November of last year. Last year. So overall, the company's only uh, just over a year old. Um, Wonderful. And uh, we were able to pick up the asset. Um, we acquired it from the bankruptcy estate of uh, Midway Gold. And we essentially acquired the project for the equivalent of about a dollar sixty uh, per <laughs> per resource ounce. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty unique, eh? Um, so, yeah, so we bought the property um, well, and uh, we were able to get reduce that royalty, <laughs> and uh, you know, so we've got a very clean start here. Um, the title to the asset uh, it was scrubbed through federal bankruptcy court, so it's clean as a whistle. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, great. Very important. Yeah. And not your first rodeo. No, no. Um, been in this business for almost 40 years. Uh, I'm a mining engineer and a mineral economist, both from the Colorado School of Mines. Wonderful. And I've been in the business my entire career. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I guess it must, was it this project that really, uh, did you have an eye on it in the bankruptcy there? Yeah, I did. Um, I reviewed this project as part of a uh, merger due diligence between Midway Gold and Canyon Resources back in <laughs> 2007. Wonderful, and yeah. I liked it. 
I thought that uh, Midway was not quite on the right track with it, but uh, I kept an eye on it. And then when it became available, uh, that's when we moved. Mr. Jim Hesketh, President and CEO of Viva Gold Corp, VAU on the TSX Venture. Thanks very much for talking to me today. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Cheers. Thanks.